Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. Someone halfway got offended. And normally, if you're easily offended, you don't want to listen to me anyway. True. <laughs> so, <clears throat> someone said something about it, and then the person who assumed I was talking to, about them, and I'm like, shit, dude, I wasn't even talking about you're you. You're talking but, about someone else. Yeah, yeah I remember totally that. a different yeah. couple. And so, for me, when I talk about somebody or their dog, I mean... It doesn't matter. There's a hundred different dogs I could be talking about with the same issues, you know. Yeah. Or people with a dog and a dog issue. So, me, I'm not here to uh, single anybody out except for our own people, you know. But all we're doing is trying to help people and have fun doing it. You yeah, know? yeah. And as yesterday or today, I was telling somebody in the round pen that, you know, let me and Bianca, whoever the trainer is that day, let us do all the worrying and stuff. You just have fun training on your dog. Cause it's like they're coming to court and they're they're the defense attorney, and and the dog really has done some things wrong, but they're like, it's a good kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he stole he stole a car yeah. and he yeah. wrecked it into a grocery store, but he's a really good kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least he didn't hit the liquor store. <laughs> the liquor store. <laughs> So, for me, I think it is, and it's kind of that way, and one day, somebody's going to come in here, and they're just going to say, hey, my dog's just not good. We've had, we've like, had that. We've had that. Not very often, but well, we have but they had say that. How good they are. No, we've had one or two that well, come in and just that like that. The, it's the ones that like literally would drop the dog well, off yeah, and leave. Some people just chunk them yeah, out the <laughs> yeah, like they're that. like, they can I leave them today? Yeah. <laughs> and then there's other people that are like, he can stay today. <laughs> yeah. That one guy didn't even get out of his car. Yeah, he yeah. handed me his little yeah. dog through the window. Yeah, and said, so just fix him, and I'm like, holy shit! And he was pissed because the groomer shaved his little. Long-haired dog when they were supposed to groom it, <laughs> they got confused and sheared it, and he was not very. And I think he said he spent two or three hours in Portland chasing it down the street because he couldn't catch it, and the guy's eighty some years old, so he was pretty aggravated. So Bianca, what subject do you have tonight? Um, I would like to um talk about. unacceptable behaviors that people accept because I think sometimes they don't know how to fix them or that there are people who will help. Mm-hmm. And we talk, that's, we made a video today and we talk a lot about helping dogs that don't get along with dogs, helping dogs that are leash aggressive, but we help a lot of dogs who don't get along good with people either. And if you have a dog that sits on your couch with you and people come into the living room and it growls, it's not good. And and you need help before it escalates. You know, I showed some people one time, and you were here at the time, I think maybe with two different dogs, that their dogs, people couldn't even hardly come in their house. They were wolfing and lunging at them and stuff. And <clears throat> one dog here I've just done lessons with, but... I brought that dog in the house with one of the owners, and then we had people come to the door and ring the doorbell, knock on the door, and come in the house. And the dog didn't even bark. I think they might even petted the dog when they came in the house. But it's for me, it's because, like you're saying, the dog don't own my house, you know? Right. And people don't understand, I think, or, well, they don't understand the ways they can get fixed. Like, we've got a five-year-old dog here now that'll drag you down on a leash. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was told it would jump all over you. I never did let it jump on me because it was too big. Uh, and I think it's dog aggressive on leash, Maddie. Oh, yeah, Maggie. Maggie. Yeah, She's dog v- aggressive leash on reactive, leash. yeah. And she has this, but, you know, it's different. <clears throat> and I always try to tell people it's different when the dog comes here and we start handling them because we just don't accept it to start. Right. You know, we see the signs before it starts. And we just prevent it. And then from there, it just kind of gets in the dog's mind that 
if I do this, I'm going to get in trouble. There's right. going to be a consequence. And the right. cons consequence is not going to be half a cheeseburger instead of the whole cheeseburger. Right, right. You know, it's going to be the prong collar, right. pinch collar, you collar. Right. Whatever we do, you know. And it's not like but, the people that come yeah. in that have those dogs haven't tried. No, they try. Everybody yeah. does. Nobody. Yeah. And that's what I tell people. You don't just... Uh, you don't just like, man, I'm just going to screw up this pup real good and see how, how bad I can get no. it. Yeah. You no, know, you just kind of wake up one day and you're like, holy crap, how did I get from there to here? Right. And, you know, that's what we're here for, to tell you how you got there. Right. And try to help you figure out how to fix it, what's the best way to fix it. Sometimes. Well, it's like that guy with the corgi today. That dog sat when he asked it to, and it yeah. even downed when it was in the other pen. But he couldn't get it to stop barking at him. Right. And it, well, he did for a minute, but it, it didn't really stop. But it right. it laid down right when he asked him, and it sat when he asked it. So it was clear he had done something with oh, the dog. With it. it was just a few quirks he couldn't figure out how to stop. Like leash aggressive. He's really yeah. bad on Yeah, leash. he growled. He yeah. Dogs and, growl. and then uh, the other one was scared of people and scared of everything, kind of. But, yeah. Uh, the hard thing for people to accept is... If your dog's scared of things, <clears throat> you can't make it braver by hugging it and petting it. And telling it it's yeah. going to be I mean, okay. Yeah. You just got to try to figure out how. And, you know, we have a lot of different ways. And, and we were working dogs the other day, me and you and Nancy and Kay and I think Jessica, whoever. Mm -hmm. And you were having trouble with the Mac, the little doodle. Oh, yeah. Max. And I had you to change something, and then I yeah. had you change it totally different. Then it really worked. Yeah. So... So all these dogs, it doesn't matter. They can be 10 different dogs with the same yeah. behaviors, and you might have to deal with it 10 different ways. Well, yeah, there was, it was both the litter mates. I went through the same thing with Scout. Uh, they, those two pups will go out into the field and bite dogs in the ass and bite them in the legs and bark and m maul them, not in a I want to kill dogs way. They're just crazy. But then you go in and you put them on a leash and make them behave and ask them to sit, and they're yeah. like... <sighs> Yeah, it's like you're just going to kill them or something. Yeah. It's just because I feel they haven't had rules that are really been followed for a long time that are right. just consistently right. the same. And, right. Uh, the and red the, healer today, Annie, I was amazed how good she was. She did really good. And yeah, I bumped I, her. I just, he caught her once and you thought I'd hit her with a hot shot. Really? Oh, uh, she was so pissed because her daddy was here. And I think she, well, she was trying to get by with something with him, and I touched the e-collar, and man, she, like, jumped and screamed and hollered. Really? And I think she wanted to give her a cheeseburger and a paper towel or something. Yeah, because she and, normally just... Yeah, she don't care. She just goes <laughs> yeah, flow. yeah. But she did so good, and so did he. I mean, I was impressed with how good he did. That's dog, awesome. So it's always fun, because that was his first visit back. And then Cooper, we'll talk about Cooper, too, another dog that's here, and the owners will probably be on here. And, uh I feel they were really happy with Cooper yesterday with their lesson. And that dog, what is that dog? Uh, I think an Australian Shepherd Border Collie. Yeah, because yeah. he longer hair. Yeah, because you said the good part was the Border Collie and the yeah. bad part was the Australian <laughs> Shepherd. You shouldn't say that on here. I'm getting trouble now. I'm getting enough trouble about healers. So, but that dog was really hungry bad when he got here because he would just jump up and wrap his legs around you and try to yeah. hug you. Yeah. Act like he didn't even want to let you go forever, you know. And then he would just walk in front of you and run in front of you and trip you over and run circles around you. And he just... Bounce you into yeah, a door. Yeah. He was just not... He was just <clears throat> a really happy-go-lucky kind of dog. Yeah, he wasn't mean. No, he wouldn't bite you. I mean, he had a lot of opportunities to bite us, and he never tried to. Uh, but it's just... There's so many <clears throat> things you can do with dogs, but... There's so many things that people accept. And sometimes it's because they've tried a trainer or two or three or four. And they just don't get their problem fixed. And so they come to the conclusion that it's not fixable. Right. And not saying we can fix all dogs. Because I'm sure there's a lot of dogs out there we can't fix, you know. Right. But I think that a lot of times, depending on the dog and the circumstances, and yada, 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 you know. Uh, but I think that a lot of times, someone who was just here recently... And they went to a couple, two or three different trainers, and we were talking, and I said, well, you know, I think the, one, the main problem is is the trainers didn't fix the owners, the people who I was talking to. <clears throat> and they couldn't argue with me because they didn't get a lot of uh, training themselves. Right. 
And but yet they spend a lot of time and money and effort on getting their dogs trained. But I think the people, the trainers, miss the most valuable part of it is that owner. You yeah. know, the owner's the one that screws that dog up or makes yeah. a mistake with it and yeah. causes a problem. Yeah. And then nobody, I don't know if you want to call it, calls the owner out, you know, or hurts right. their feelings. I mean, I'm not very good at, I guess, I've been told, not very good at not hurting people's feelings because I tell them the truth. And, I mean, I think that's one of the things that helps us so much is the fact that, and I don't ever mean it personal. I never try to bow my chest out and insult someone. I don't right. want to do that. That's not what we're here for at all. I just want to help people have a better dog and have a better understanding of why their dog is the way they are. You know? Right. Uh, we got Meeks here. Meeks. <clears throat> Meeks. Yeah, Meeks. And that dog, I don't know, he's had a pretty rough life. He's like yes. five or six years old. And he's had like three different homes. And he's a, what is he, a shepherd? Shepherd Husky Chow. And he's yeah. big. He's big. Yeah. His tail looks just like a chow. It's all curled up and looks like you mean, which I think <laughs> he is. Uh, but he's been with us just a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. And he just, he's real watchy. He's just like waiting for the, for me, he's either waiting to attack at the right moment or he's just watching to see if things are going to keep getting better like they are. Yeah. Because he ain't had no, Bianca's handled him most. <clears throat> I think I've handled him once or twice too. He might go bathroom. But for me, with dogs like that, we just, as long as we can keep him on a roll of being good, mm -hmm. I think he's learning. He'll we don't start to relax a little bit, yeah. yeah. And let him figure out where he's at and what it's all about. And, <clears throat> and for me, I still say a lot of times, if dogs keep watching good dogs being good, it leans on them a little bit. I mean, a rule of thumb for me is, is if you have a really ornery ass dog and you go buy another dog or rescue a dog, there's a better chance that that new dog is going to become ornery right. than they are the ornery dog is going to become good. But here with us, when we bring in ornery dogs, we let them be with good dogs. They're usually, well, my yeah. dogs for a while. Yeah. And then uh, we can add Bianca's dogs or whoever's, but... And we really try mm -hmm. to balance even the dogs we take out together. We don't take three of the turdiest turds. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we try to split yeah. them up. And our dogs, you know, that's one of the things that what's here is we try to get dogs outside in a pack if we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel, if I we always, feel it's safe for all of them. Yeah, yeah, I always feel it's a really good thing for the dogs. It gives them a chance to be good with a pack of dogs. We lead them in and out of the barn on leashes all the time. they got to be good coming in and out. We make them wait before they go through doors and gates, you know, the normal stuff. Even with a pack of dogs, sometimes, I mean, I've seen videos somewhere of 10, 15 dogs sitting at a gate waiting for us to call them through. And <clears throat> we open the gate and call one dog at a time and by name. And, and it works. I mean, if you try it, I mean, like I said, we've done it. I've done it for years with my cow dogs. But a lot of times for me, that stuff's fun, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's training, but it's the fun part of training because you can really see that, man, that's working. Mm -hmm. And the dogs really see that, hey, they said a name and then they give a command. It wasn't just to come and 15 dogs come at you. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a lot more work to train in that way when you train with a name with before command. So I think that people just, I got told a couple today that if we do boarding training or if they do here with their dogs when they go home, they still got a lot of training to do, but. They can either be dreaded training or it can be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I don't know. It don't take a lot of time to train a dog. It just takes consistency on being fair to your dog so they understand you. So, Brett, what do you think? <clears throat> Suzanne says, that's the interesting thing. What well, may work for one dog may not work for the rest. Don't keep doing the same uh, wrong thing over and over. I've been getting that lecture all week, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always said if you what you're doing ain't working, you got to do something different. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, what's bad is I was trying five different things, yeah. and all five I had to go to number six and seven. <laughs> yeah, and it is. And for me, that's I, that's what I enjoy so much about training is is when I get except for sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. You know, like the other night I woke up in the middle of the night, aggravated with myself about two different dogs I worked that day, and and I felt I made a mistake and. The dogs didn't know I made a mistake either, but nobody else did really. But I felt that and I knew that I'd made a mistake and I corrected myself the next day. I didn't go to buy the dogs a cheeseburger and a bunch of treats and a cake and have a party and tell them how sorry I was. Right. I just went back to training and I mean, like I said, I don't, you can't go backwards and 
fix what you messed up the day before, but you can go forward and do it a different way and do it the way you feel the right or the way it's going to work. I feel like dogs mm-hmm. are a lot different than people in that way. They move forward better. They do. They don't hold all these. Yeah. Well, I mean, I won't say they don't hold a grudge. But right. <clears throat> sometimes a dog Not the way a person does. Not the way a person Yeah, it's, will. it's just way different. Uh, if you hold yourself fair to a dog and be a leader for them, they'll accept you as a leader if you're fair with them. But I'm known the people who, a kid growing up, I don't, they trained ways I would never train. You know, they were harsher back mm-hmm. in the 60s and 70s with well, the people I hung with because I was in the country. And people didn't want to spend all day chasing a dog and arguing with a dog and stuff like that. So I think the rules were just a lot black and white back then. There wasn't no gray area to start with with a lot of these people because... And, you know, we lived in a country, so our dogs didn't have to come. They didn't even come in the house at night anyway. But we didn't put them in kennels and chain them up. You know, our dogs didn't. They just kind of run loose around the house and hoped they didn't kill the chicken that was loose or something. <laughs> but nowadays, everybody wants to sue everybody. And, I mean, it makes it a lot harder when you're walking your dog down the street and right, he gets away right. from you and he gets to somebody else's dog or to someone else, you know, or runs out from a car and gets ran over <laughs> Right, guy. Yeah, Suzanne says to Bianca's topic, do you have a list of unacceptable behaviors people don't know they they have or need help getting fixed? Dogs barking and jumping all over people when they come in the door. When especially when someone knocks or someone rings the doorbell. If there's an intruder, they're not gonna ring the doorbell and they're not gonna knock. So the dogs don't need to be at the door. And that that's just like an impolite behavior. Totally unacceptable ones is like dogs that growl when people come in your house that you're inviting in. They rang your doorbell, knocked, and you're inviting them in and your dog is growling at them. I think it's so easy for people to say dogs that growl at uh, people at the gas station when they're trying to pump your gas. Or take your credit card. It's so easy to say, my dog's... The gas station attendant, I had a board and train dog with me the other day that growled. And I was like, hey, no. And she's like, it's okay. He's just protecting your car. Like, it's not his car. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even my dog. (laughs) And uh, uh, it's just such a normal thing for people to say my dog is protective of me or he guards me. And I think that the people feel like the dog really loves them. So it's protecting them. But it's protecting you, protecting you from things that are not dangerous. (laughs) And it's putting people who are not harmful at risk. By allowing those behaviors. You know, the, on the same topic for me is, and I don't know, I'm, I don't live in town, fortunately. A lot of her, that's good for me and a lot of people in town. <laughs> because I would probably be in trouble. But it's when you go out into your backyard and want to smoke a joint or barbecue or drink a beer or whatever you want. What Marvin thinks people do yeah. to live in town. I don't know what people do in backyard. I got a barbecue finer than that. But if you go out in your backyard and you have three neighbors, one behind you, one on each side of you, and all three of them is three dogs are in the backyard, woof, woof, and Barking, you, yeah. When you're in your own yeah. freaking yard. Yeah. That just, that would suck. Unacceptable out. behavior. Yes. And yeah. people accept yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And it's fun for me here a while back because somebody sent us the video. Uh, they had a dog here that was, they'd go out of the backyard and bark at the neighbor's dog, and the neighbor's dog bark, and they'd fence argue back. Oh, home. yeah, yeah. And they sent us a video, because they asked if we could fix it. I said, for sure, if you just follow. We can't fix your neighbor's dog, yeah. but, yeah. And so they sent us a video, their dog was rolling around in the backyard playing while our neighbor's dog Sunbathing. Huh? She was sunbathing, yeah. yeah. While the neighbor's yeah. dog was barking at yeah. The dog didn't even bark, yeah. didn't even care. Yeah. So, for me, that, it's just, man, I couldn't imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't. I mean, and and for me, I mean, it's like, it's just black and white. Like, yeah. I dated a lady one time for like 20 minutes because <clears throat> I went to her house and sat down on her couch and her big old chow was right in front of us. And, and I'm like, can you shut your dog up? And she's like, no. And I said, well, I can leave. <laughs> and I never talked to her again. I was like, I ain't freaking going to go to somebody's house. And their dog's 
Then well, I, I think in, in those scenarios, I think those people truly believe their dog won't bite someone. I know, like they, they but really, I, didn't I know, but I like but it. they really think that their dog won't bite someone, <laughs> and it's just not acceptable behavior yeah, in yeah. my world. And if you're walking your dog in town. And I talked to a guy the other day who said that his dog's really good on a leash. And I said, so it doesn't like bark or lunge at other dogs. Well, if they lunge at her. I know. I accept that. It's know? like, no. No. That's not. It's not eye for an eye. Yeah. At the gas station the other day, somebody asked me that. They say, can you fix my dog from pulling on a leash? I'm like, well, for sure. I mean, I said, I don't know if I can fix you. Yeah. But I can, can fix, fix the dog. dog. And I said, we're pretty good at teaching people how to keep them happening. Yeah. And so she won a card. I gave her one of my cards. And I don't know if she ever called her or she didn't, but hopefully so. And I think people, you know, and we're going to touch on it because we've had a person or two uh, here recently that's gotten bit with a dog with a pinch collar walking it in town. Mm hmm and it, for me, if you think about it, I mean, to me, it makes perfect sense. You have a dog that's a little bit leash reactive, and you put a prong collar on it, and you lean back, and the dog leans forward, wanting to get to this dog, and you keep leaning back, and it keeps pulling forward. To me, you're putting pain on the dog. And not releasing the pressure. Yes. And if a dog can't get away from the pain, sometimes it's going to turn around and bite the person who's causing the pain. Mm-hmm. And we've had that twice here recently. It's like it just and, wants to break out of it. Yeah, it yeah. wants to get away from it. But whenever they start feeling that pressure of the pinch collar, and we use collars, but all kinds of collars and leashes and stuff. But I think people need to really understand them better sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you can't get the leash loose, it doesn't matter what you're using. You need to get some help. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line. <clears throat> and we show people all the time that, you know, sometimes it's doesn't take but a minute to show them how to get it done, but that doesn't fix it. It's still going to happen, so you've got to learn how just to prevent it and learn some cues, you know, like old Ronnie that used to come here all the time, uh, a big old pit bull. He couldn't even be around dogs. I mean, he was bad, and he was pretty big, strong pit bull. But I finally figured out that when his right ear twitched, he was fixing to make a move. Right, right. If you correct yeah. it right now, Early enough. he was good. Yeah. But yeah. if you let him set off, yeah. he was like, I mean, he went from a 1 to 100 and like, from he went from 1 to 99 and yeah. he didn't have no in-between. Yeah. But if you stopped him right there, he was like, I'm good. I don't want to be a turd. So I think that's the thing. And, you know, like you said with the... Dogs barking at people's doors when people are invited in. I don't know. I couldn't handle it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think a dog should have a place to go to. And and for me, it's not about putting them in a crate or a kennel or in the back bedroom. You know I mean? Right. you got to do what you got to do to be safe. So I think most people don't safe. know how mm -hmm. easy it is to get your dog to go lay on a bed and leave the door mess alone. Yeah, even the dogs that aren't aggressive, the dogs that just want to bark and jump and mm -hmm. lick people, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh those dogs are but it it is being consistent, you know. And for me I tell people all the time, if you get up at five o'clock and you gotta be out the door by ten after and you gotta get dressed and then you gotta brush your teeth and you gotta let your dog out for a half a second go to the bathroom, I don't know, they ain't gonna get much better. You know, you need to get up a little bit earlier and spend a little bit of time with yeah. your dog if, yeah. if you have a dog. And I know people buy dogs, get dogs, give to dogs, whatever. And situations change where they don't have a lot of time or money to put into right. them, you know. But I don't feel we've ever turned someone away. No. You know, if we can figure out a way to help somebody, we always and want to help somebody. I think, I think it's like... <clears throat> I don't know. I'm sure everyone doesn't agree with this, but it's like sometimes two parents stay together and it's better for them to divorce for the kids, <laughs> yeah. but they stay together because they're like, no, we got to stay together for the kids, but it's way harder on the kids for them to stay together. And it's like that if you have a dog that you had time for, no longer have time for, aren't really like keeping it trained and, and mentally healthy or physically healthy, it sometimes is the better thing well, to find a better fit for the dog if you're not going to change right but i think the, the thing that's so embedded in people's head and i mean i'm gonna probably get hate mail but i, I know, I, I know. Of it. Uh, 
But people are going to be pissed about me saying that. Exactly what you're saying. For me, people say, oh, you get that dog for a lifetime. No, yeah, you, you, don't. Ke- you, you need you, to keep it for life. The only thing yeah. for, I think, life is your own. I think so that. If you die, you're dead. That keeps a lot of dogs life. in some shitty situations <clears throat> because the people are ashamed and, I mean, I to find a better home them, for it. You know, I don't even know how yeah. many cow dogs, 100 or 5, I don't know. But I always want them to go to good homes. Yeah. You know, I like for them to have a good life. And. We get rescue dogs, you know. We've done 30, 35 dogs from the Newburgh shelter that we brought up here and rehabbed. And, <clears throat> and we usually get the turds. I mean, we don't go down there. And the only dog that we ever got there that was really super cool was Rufus. And Rufus yeah, he didn't have any behavioral crazy. problems. Yeah, yeah he, he was just a puppy. Jump all over and he had broke his leg and, at like yeah. four weeks or something, so yeah. he never got to go run and be yeah. a puppy. So then he was four months old, five, no, like six, five, six months old, right? Yeah, so, oh and God. he had never really gotten to go run. Yeah, so, so he, he was awesome. a little crazy. Yeah. but The whole thing is for us with him, well, he was here like a day and he got a new home. Yeah. But... I don't know. I just don't feel that it's fair, like you said, to a dog for somebody his life changed, you know. I mean, even somebody that works normally 40 hours a week and parties the rest of the week, you know. Yeah. And if something happens where you got to work 60 or 70 hours yeah. a week and yeah. stress is bad, everything's yeah. bad, you know, things have gotten bad. Yeah. Then you got this dog cooped up in the backyard yeah. in the back room, you know. Why not find yeah. a good home? Well, I, th- I literally think of both Luca and Rufus are living on giant farms, yeah. just running around yeah. in the fresh just air. Be and, a dog in the yeah, countryside. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Hosting uh, wine tastings yeah. and living their best yeah. life. And they might have been stuck in a house before. Who knows? Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, for me, and Bianca don't mean that someone would have got them stuck in a house. They're both rescue dogs. So right. that could have been the life before we got them. Right. So they went to a great home. And the biggest thing is, for me, is... You know, it doesn't matter whether your dog lives on a huge farm. Or, no, I'm not saying yeah, living in a house saying, is bad. Yeah, saying, I mean, but yeah. Bianca had her dogs in an apartment in town. Yeah, and they had yeah. a great life. We had a treadmill. Got, yeah, we took them out to run off leash. Yeah, they they, yeah. Here. I mean, they yeah. got all kinds of with their dogs. So you can't go by how much room you have. Right. You know. Right. I think you go by how many minutes or days or hours you yeah. can spend with your dog hanging yeah. out, being a dog. So that's the thing that people sometimes miss out on is... I'm just giving examples of people who maybe didn't have time for a dog before, and now these two dogs have great lives. and that's... The thing is, for me, you can go down to the park and sit on the park bench with a 30-foot long line and mm-hmm. let your dog run around and play and chase Yeah, we used to go to the college all the yeah. time when we lived also, in town. Also, all the COVID dogs, like, they, a lot of people aren't working from home anymore. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. Chevy, she... Yeah. I mean, I come home at lunch, but... She doesn't see me nearly as much as she used to. She still gets yeah. her exercise, but... Yeah. And she's a cool dog. She's yeah. coming in day. She didn't try to bite me or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, <forgot>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she would ever try to do that. <laughs> so, Brad, you got anything? Yeah, Denise Caller says, Luna says hi. Luna. I think, can I see the <laughs> name? I think she's not Luna. saying, he's not saying the name right, so Denise? I'm confused. K-A-L-A-R. Uh, we've had too many Lunas lately. We have had a lot of Lunas. We've had a blue humor Luna, right? That one hasn't been here in a while. Okay, you got that one. He's a Nancy McCann says, Evening, everyone. Fun day today. Hey, thanks, Nancy. We always appreciate your time and your work ethics. Oh, Ooh. that's uh, Luna from the coast. Mark came for the clinic with her. She lives at oh, the coast, yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Hey, How's welcome. Luna doing? <clears throat> Hugh Pinlin says, When I walk blue, it is amazing how many people I see that have no engagement with their dog. It is so sad. The dog completely ignores their owner and try to go off and do what they want. And they do a lot, you know, and I think that's one of the things I was telling the, the guy here today with Annie. Because it was funny because Annie would go try to play with dogs in his first lesson back right there a week of his dog been here for a three week boarding train and his dog would run back over to him and be like hi and then they would go play and they would come back and be high and you know where some dogs don't even come to you like the little husky that ate me that time on the playground it didn't want nothing to do with mom and dad it's like it's own little world you had to catch me if you wanted me and put me on leash take me out of here but after it ate me up then it was like their best friends 
I mean, it didn't like me no more. I didn't get Christmas presents. Well, Bianca got flowers and stuff, but I didn't get nothing. <laughs> and but, cookies. Uh, yeah, and cookies. <laughs> I was the one who got eight, but she got all the treats. <laughs> and a really nice car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. that was funny. But we haven't seen that dog for a while, huh? No, we haven't. You know, me and we were talking today on our way back from getting a dog from <laughs> Homeward Bound to Mac. Uh, about people don't get back to us, and then we're like, ah, I wonder what's wrong. And then people do get back to us, they have a problem, and it's like, you know, if all the people who don't get back to us aren't having a problem, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, that's true. We yeah. don't hear from very many of them. Yeah. So, and it's not that they don't get back to us. We just they just never reach out for any additional yeah, help because they don't good. need help. Yeah. And I mean, I'm the same way. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't. I don't call my airline pilot and talk to him all the time for flying me to New Orleans and back the other day. It's like, hey, dude, thanks for the ride. Uh, Brett, got anything else? Jessica Alvarez says, "Hey guys." Hey Jess. Who? Our employee, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. We just talked about you earlier, too, and it was good. Thank you. Um, Biata Harris says, hey, guys. Hey, how are you? Uh, I asked her how the pup is, and she said, uh, <laughs> what pup? she's really so good. good. Oh. Can't believe I haven't screwed her up yet after almost a month. You guys <laughs> built a great foundation for her and helped Hey, me. what's your definition of not screwing her up? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, we're happy. We can't wait to see her again, see how well you're doing with her. Hey, Mom, we posted a video of Theo on Facebook. It's a little doodle, and that's a leash training video you should watch. Yeah, it really helps a lot of people, I think. I think that some people, you know, have this vision that they're going to get an eight-week-old puppy, and he's going to walk right by their foot for life. I definitely thought it was going to be easier yeah. than it was. Yeah. Hey, Denise said, hope to see you at a Set Your Dog Free soon. We're going to be starting that up again soon. So uh, contact the office and make sure that we get you all set up for the notifications. Is that Willie? No, that's Luna, the coast dog oh. from the coast. Yeah. So, you know, Rochelle, like you were just talking about, you thought it would be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. People just don't realize how hard it is. Well, I, this is my first dog, so I had no idea what I was getting yeah. myself into. You didn't even know you had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you didn't know. How did we meet you if you didn't have a problem? Taylor? Yeah, the Great Dane. So what, did she just drag her over here to say hi? No. No. I, I went to another training, and I was like, this, this is a waste of my money. And I knew I needed something else. But and she to... followed Taylor, and Taylor showed all the stuff oh. she was doing with her dogs and how he used to be reactive, she and now she's not. still do that? Still do. Maybe she divorces. Show our stuff and share our stuff and like her stuff. She still does. She still likes our stuff, yeah. yeah. I don't see it. She divorces. You know what? I don't see much of our stuff for some reason, except for... TikTok. Well, Instagram. maybe we have you restricted on you some might. of it. <laughs> well, not at all. <clears throat> Every time I make a comment, it disappears. Like, huh. I thought I said something, but I that's, guess I that's We hired a PR person <laughs> to filter <laughs> out what you <laughs> say. <laughs> yeah. I'm just excited to see how many clients we have that's really changed and their dogs can be free running into work yeah. and hiking and going to the beaches yeah. and you don't have to micromanage them every two seconds to yeah. make sure they're out of trouble. So. What you got, Brett? Nancy McCann says, what are some of the signs a person would look for in their dog before a dog becomes reactive in a situation like another dog across the street? That's a good question. You know, and it's, for me, I just talked to it today with that boy with Annie. Yeah. I think that sometimes, you know, when if you have a litter of puppies, me, I always watch the puppies to try to pick out the pup I want. The hard thing is if you have a litter of pups sometimes, if you're trying to pet a puppy and they all come at you and this one pup just determined to push every puppy away so you'll pet it, the majority of the people will pet that pup. And so you kind of start setting that pup up for push everybody out of the way, I get tension. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if that puppy's over wrestling another puppy and he gets a puppy down and they're being a little rough and you go pick that puppy up that's on top and you pet him and start telling him how you can't do that, He's getting attention again for doing some honorary mm -hmm. rather than just correcting mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> so for me, I kind of watch that kind of stuff. Even with the other dogs, like today, the older dog was mouthing on top of the pup. 
in the lesson. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and people think it's fun and games, but it leads up to problems later, you know. And it's the same thing when your puppy gets a little bit bigger <clears throat> and the dog comes up at you and that pup just crowds in between you and that dog and tries yeah. to keep that dog away. You normally, you talk to your dog and then touch it or whatever, you know. And it's kind of the same way with people. When a person comes up to shake your hand, give you a hug, say hi, your dog starts crowding in between. Yeah. I mean, all of those things are starting to lead you to problems that people don't even recognize right, or see. Right, right. And for me, if people would teach their pups to set before they get petted or attention, mm -hmm. it takes away a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. And if you make your pup always behave before you let it play, and you can get it out of a play, which most people can't once two pups start playing. Or right, right. Yeah, they can't can. recall yeah. them out of it, yeah. So you could say use a long line, but it's really hard for people to manage a long line with two puppies because they get them all tangled and tied up. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody calling saying, oh, my pup broke a leg because I had a long line on her, you know. So you always, whatever we say here, you know, you got to make sure you use a lot of common sense. And if you don't have common sense, call us and email us or come do a lesson or whatever, you know. But the video that we put up today that you did, I guess, with me with Theo, right? Mm -hmm. that, that video right there will kind of show you how... To, and this pup was a little bit older, a year old, and it's been through a couple of trainers, I think. And <clears throat> super, super nice little pup. But it would just jump on you so bad. And, I mean, the video today was about getting your pup to quit pulling your leash when you was trying to go on a walk to exercise your pup. I think sometimes to exercise your pup, people think that i got to walk 20 blocks. Right. You know, with that pup today, it probably got more of a mental, physical exercise in a three-minute video or one-minute video, right? Right. It probably got more exercise in that one-minute video because it had to think. It had to keep focus on where I was. It started having to keep focus on not letting my leash right. get tight. Right. And then it's like, shit, i got to keep up with this guy when right. he walks fast or slow. Right. So your pup's getting both. He's getting a lot of mental challenge right. on the training, and he's getting some cool exercise. So for me, if you added that up, that one minute video might have been a half a block or a block of actual unruly walking, right. really dragging you and pulling on your leash and stuff. And so you can do the same thing with the smaller pups, you know. You just don't want to put a lot of pressure on any of the dog right. necks, you know, fighting with them and stuff. But with me and my videos that you see, unless we've got a least aggressive dog that we're videoing to show what's wrong with it. I normally, you see us all lose leashes. I mean, that's just a rule of thumb around here. And that life. really goes back to what Nancy's talking about, asking how to know before their dog becomes yeah. reactive in a situation like a do another dog across the street. Anytime if you're, they pull your yeah, leashes and start towards, you. And you can't get the leash mm -hmm. loose, and they're not really mentally with you. And they don't even have to be doing it at something right. or someone. Right. People don't matter. I mean... They can walk their dog in a square room without anything in it, and the dog will pull them. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So all you do is... A tight leash add, yes. usually causes problems yes. in and the then end. you add something to it, especially speed, you know? Yeah. A bicycle, a jogger, yeah. or a cat, you know, another dog, a chicken, anything going to run by them. Yeah. And then if you get another dog lunging at them on their barking, 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 a lot of times your young dog is going to want to go play with that dog. Yeah. But then you inflict pain. Right. Then the little dog, is, he associates the pain with the other dog that's lunging at him, barking. Right. And then you get dogs that want to fight. Or you don't mm -hmm. inflict pain and you grab their harness and you're patting them and yeah, telling them it's them okay back. and yeah. petting them and trying to calm <clears> them <throat> down. And then you're yeah. just working them up and encouraging it. Yes. And so... Me, I'm not a harness fan. I mean, we went and got uh, Rocco the other day from shelter, mm -hmm. and he about got out of this harness. And that's a 97-pound dog that has no manners. And it's like, holy shit, I don't know if we would have caught him if he would have got loose. Yeah, right? a lot of times when so, people get out of the car with the harness on their dog, Marvin and I are instantly yeah. thinking, how are right, we going to catch this some. dog let's when it some. escapes? Because all they got to do is back They up hear one it. dog yeah. bark in the barn, and they're like, oh, I'm not going yeah. in there. And, and they, they slip start out of it. Back yeah. up, and they, you got a harness and no dog. Yeah. Chevy would get offended if I put a harness on. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't, I, I'm not a harness fan at all, you know. We got one hanging in the barn. 
And but it's only because it came with a dog. Unless you want a dog to pull you on a skateboard or yeah. you want to buckle it in. Or sled. Yeah. I mean, we could have used one for last month. I know. Month. I was wishing we had trained Rocco yeah. when it snowed. <laughs> he could have taken me all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Driven again, me to work. That's it right now. <laughs> I don't know what time of day it is. Holy crap. 642. Hey, did, uh. No. Let me check my. <laughs> I don't know how to tell. I can't. I don't uh, think I can see. So a saddle K nine on her, Lisa. I don't know how to shadow see. K nine. Well, she said she was on her. She did, huh? Did she text you? She could comment, and then we would know. Hey, uh, you know her name. Lisa, you want to comment on here? I don't see Lisa here. She might be gone now. She was on here a while ago. Uh, but I think that's the thing. So many times with people is you have a problem with a dog, and it's, you know, it's a huge problem, a, a least reactive dog. That whether it's trying to get to a cat, a chicken, or a skateboard, a bicycle, another dog, whatever it is. For me, I think if I was going to look for a trainer to help me with that, I would really look at their resume. Yeah. You know, and see what kind of dogs they work with. Here a while back, somebody said I was just a, <laughs> was I a ranch dog trainer? Farm, farm, farm. Really bad farm dog yeah, trainer. really bad farm dog <laughs> trainer. What a definition. <laughs> I know, but I think sometimes you got to go with what's talking, you know? Yeah. I mean... There's also a lot of, like, pet smart trainers, and that doesn't do you anything. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go there. I don't want to throw names <laughs> under the bus, even though somebody throws mine under the bus. But I think it kind of like Bianca said, I should really be proud of that. Because if you can train a farm ranch dog, you're pretty handy. You know? Like yeah. my wife's dog, it'll walk through the chickens and the cows and the horses and the goats and never bite nothing. Don't bite nothing. But if you ask it, it'll go to work. And that's, that's saying a lot right there. And my dog bears the same way, you know. And uh, for me, when you can train the, the, if you can train a cow dog to lay down at a quarter mile away with us, you're pretty handy. As long as they can hear you, of course. But, Your cow dog knew the cows were out before you even knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, for me, that's, I feel, one of the reasons with my uh, obedience, fluffy dog training, whatever you want to call it. I guess problem dogs mostly is what we work here. We get a lot of fluffy dogs now, too, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Since Bianca yeah. and really been promoting all the yeah. lap dogs, uh, we get a lot of them. And we get some honorary ones. I got one bit me in the knuckle a week or two ago. I, ju I just feel like you can't argue that it is a nice balance to have a Theo and a Meeks. <laughs> Like, you, you go through it with Meeks, and then you're like, hey, go get something. And that's what I told you about cow dog training. You <laughs> thought it was all peaches and ice cream. I don't think I ever and, said it was peaches and ice cream, no. but I didn't know it was like yeah, rolling so around in the dirt, sweating yeah. and crying. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for me, we take the cow dog, depending on the, the, the actual cow dog, doesn't matter what breed it is, how gritty they are, whatever you want to call it. But you teach those dogs to, you know, to bite on command, to quit on command, and walk through the herd of cattle with you, and next time they got to work them. Uh, <clears throat> for me, I remember on ranches sometimes we'd be moving a herd of cows, there'd be a couple hundred head or whatever, and we'd have one cow just had a baby, and we'd want to leave that one. And then here you've taught your dog to take cows and not leave cows, now you want to leave a cow. So for me, I don't know, I'm like, leave it. And I grabbed my dog a few times, and they're like, okay, I guess we're going to leave it. And they would take the herd and we would go on and they'd leave the gallon cap. So anytime you do something like that, like Jody's dog, Rio, she would bring in Jody's chickens that got out, except her two pet chickens. She left her two pet chickens alone. And she would herd the other yeah. chickens around yeah. the pet chickens and yeah. put them in the barn. Yeah. But she wouldn't bother the two pets. But yeah. it's just, you know, a repetition of training. Yeah. And Jody has fun at it, you know. And me, I love training cow dogs. I mean, my blood pressure was up probably more than it was down. <laughs> but I love training it. And then now you go to the dogs that we have now. Now we just have spoiled dogs. I mean, normally that's the reason they've gotten in trouble because they've had too many 
trophies. Spoiled when, without when the rules and, yeah. and a good foundation. And for me, I always, and people say, ah, he don't believe in dogs being on the couch in the bed. Dog could be anywhere That's you want not true. It. Yeah. 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 It's I just mean, not true. we got true. a picture somewhere of me and Blues are sitting on the couch yeah. eating cheeseburgers or something. Yeah. And so I think that people misunderstand what I mean and sometimes what I say. Sometimes they hear the first word and not the last, you know. Yeah. And I think that if your dog is well-mannered enough and is trained well enough, you can let him on the couch or you can let him on the bed or ride in front seat of your truck or, you know, share your cheeseburger with him, whatever you want to do with him. But I think that your dog needs to be able to earn them rights to have those privileges. They yeah. can't just be thrown out there because you had a bad day and... uh for me, the, the emotional support dog is a whole other world that I could get myself thrown under a bus and drove over by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But I think that if you get a dog for emotional support, you got to be fair to the dog. You can't put all this pressure on yeah. a little puppy and expect him to grow up to be good. Yeah, but It's just not going to happen very well. So I think a lot of times, and I don't even know how you get emotional support dog. Is there any rule of thumb to it? You go to the doctor. Uh, yeah, I think we're getting into territory that's... <laughs> no, this is a question anybody on Facebook. You can go online and pay $150 no, 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 and no, get a I'm certificate. I'm not asking how you get the permission to get it. I know that part. How do you go get this emotional support dog? Oh, Are you talking about like a like certified dog. service dog or like an C&I, ESA like dog? Like C&I dogs, right? You That's go, a service dog. Yes, but you spend a lot of money for a trained dog. Or you you're on a long wait list. Right, but you don't just go down the pound and get a dog. No. So when you have Most emotional- of those dogs would flunk the right. tests. <laughs> but the, the one of the reasons I asked, I see the most support dog here recently dragging this lady around and shit. And I don't know how that can make you feel better when you're aggravated because your dog's trying to drag you down the street. Well, there's a a difference. Yeah, an emotional emotional support support dog and a service dog are not the same. Yeah. Seeing eye guide dog is not an emotional support dog. I know that. I know all that part. But what I'm saying is if you have an emotional support dog, right, ain't they supposed to help calm you? A lot of people get them for anxiety. Yes. So if you have one that's just like pissing you off by dragging you down and wanting to dogfight stuff, it's not really helping you, right? No, not when you have a so, leash reactive or, or... So how do you... I mean, my thing is, how do you get this dog? You know what I mean? You you literally go get any dog yeah. and you register but it as an emotional support dog. But I mean, not... For them to actually be able to help you, shouldn't they be like oh. super, super rock solid good? That's getting into service we're, we're, dogs. We're getting into a whole, Territory. like... I always get into this shit. Okay, well, here's the thing. Answer it. If you want a dog for emotional support... Shouldn't they be stable? Yes. Yeah, that was, I guess, yes. would have been easier. Yes. Shouldn't you have a stable dog Yes. that you can lean on? Your dog so, should be able to be supported by the human enough that it can be your buddy and, right. and be there with you. But if the dog has no form of leadership or training, it's usually a recipe for a disaster. And so that's what my thing is, I, I feel... Because we've had people want to come here and want us to help them with their dog, and I don't feel that I'm really uh, very good at that. Because sometimes they come here with a rescue dog that's trying to dog fight and bite people, Mm -hmm. but it's already their emotional support dog. Mm -hmm. And they want me to fix them, but I don't feel that normally they're in the mind frame to accept what I have to say about they need to board and train their dog or, you know, they need to really work at it. I, I don't dog. agree. I don't agree with that. I I think Can there are imagine? some people who have come and you have helped. Oh, them. they are. I mean, they always are. But what I said is, if and we've had one here recently that came here with a muscle support dog, but they couldn't accept the fact that their dog needed to be fixed and they needed to change their way of thing. And I think you're even the one that your feathers got ruffled 
that they shouldn't lean on this dog that wasn't stable enough to be emotional support. Because dog. I'm defending the dog, totally. Well, right. I don't but that's disagree. What I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. the people need to look at both sides of this picture. Right. You're putting all, it's kind of like putting, like I talked about when it's I It's too kid. much responsibility for that dog. And too much pressure put on it to be that kind of dog. Yeah. When it's not stable enough. Yeah. You yeah. know? And that's <clears throat> what I was trying to say is, just because you go get a dog doesn't mean it can be your emotional support dog. But the bad thing about it is so many times is people go and get this dog and they want it to be their emotional support dog and it does pretty good for a week or two or a month. And then <clears throat> I feel they put too much pressure and not enough leadership. You can't get a puppy for emotional support. No, but people You have do. to raise a puppy yeah. to be an emotional That's support what I'm dog. Saying, but yeah. people yeah. don't. They go get yeah. rescue dogs yeah. and they go get everything yeah. else yeah. for emotional support yeah. dogs. And there are but, some people who can go get a puppy and raise it right and then it's their buddy and it goes with them places and well, it behaves sure. and then it does help their anxiety. Yes, and it can. And yeah. I mean, I just seen somebody here recently again that was talking about how much their dog helped them. Yeah. And it, and dogs do it, you know. I was at the horse show the other day, and I, I don't know how many people had come talk to me about dogs, but one of them was talking about that very thing. But their dog was a farm dog, you know. It actually had a job, but still it was their buddy. Right. And they could, like, drink a beer and talk to it about problems, and the dog would listen to it. Yeah. And it yeah. didn't screw it up, but yeah. I think it was because the dog had the work. You know, it actually worked on a farm. It worked a lot, ran a lot of miles, yeah, yeah. Rode on his truck, tractors, followed horses. Yeah. And the person can still cry in his beard and hold his dog. But it could be a person who's in town who really helps the dog behave yes, and is a good leader for it. And it yes. could be a, matter, just as good a buddy yeah. for it. Yeah. It don't matter who you yeah. are and it don't matter what you do for a career. It's a matter if you're going to be a dog's leader. Right. Then the do you can lean on a dog, but you're right. not leaning on the dog in right. the same way. There's right. some people who want to go get a puppy right. and raise it for emotional support dog, but yet, yet they don't want to be the leader because they don't want to be mean to their dog. Right. They want to love them. And that's people misunderstand is to get your dog to love you and you love your dog. And the first thing I feel you need to be is a leader for your dog. Yeah. If you really love your dog, are you doing what's best for them? For you and your Because dog. sometimes it's like people who are in relationships, they love each other, but they don't love each other the best way for the other person. Yes. And this is the same thing with the dogs. Yes. So yeah. if you're going to get a dog for emotional support, I, I, to me, all I'm saying, and I don't know nothing about it because I would probably drive a dog nuts if I had a emotional support dog. They'd probably divorce You know what I feel I see more than anything? Parents getting a puppy for their Kids. teenager yeah. that needs an emotional support dog and that's really just real, real yes. messy sometimes. It is and we see it a lot. And they're not thinking I'm going to sign this puppy up for training and, and it'll be this great activity for my child to do. It's like I'm going to get this puppy that they can hug and love on and have a teddy bear and it's it's not a good recipe for success for that dog. And there's so many times that dog ends up being a parent because that kid gets yeah, a girlfriend or boyfriend. Or, or rehomed then, or at the yeah. shelter, yeah. Or they, and then yeah. they pay uh, whoever to train it, you know. Yeah. I mean, we see that quite often. People get their kids' dogs and their grandkids' dogs and everybody else's. Kepper's dad's on. Cool. How's Kepper? It's so fun seeing updates from her. No, it is so funny. She just is a dog. <laughs> yeah, Kepper's a dog that we trained here a while back that was loose in the wilderness for five or six months. Yeah, or she was pretty much feral. Yeah, yeah but and, not and rabies wanted to kill us feral. That dog's something we could really talk about. I mean, you could spend a week talking about the things to do and not do, but this dog is a dog they caught in a live trap. And I, they got it caught once and it got away, I think. Yeah. And then they got it caught again. They didn't know what to do with it because you just couldn't make a mistake or the dog was gone and you wasn't going to catch the dog. Mm -hmm. So it was loose, I don't know, three, four, five, six months or whatever. Yeah. And then got in the weather and ice storm we had here a few months ago, everything else. And it's a, I don't know what it is, some doodle looking thing. A doodle, yeah. And. We got it here for training, and, and they were skeptical about it, leaving it here, because they was worried death was going to get away or something, you know. And so were we. I mean, it was like touch and go for a while. But that dog ended up being so cool. But the main ingredient to the training was, 
is we did not feel sorry for her. We didn't, <clears throat> no. no. We treated her like a dog, yeah. and now she's cool. I mean, and I, the people didn't know if they wanted to keep her, if they was going to rehome her, what they was going to do, because it wasn't their dog. They just happened to be the one that caught it, nobody wanted her. But they, <clears throat> but they kept her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they named her Kepper, and they kept her, I guess. And how could you not, though, you know? You have this dog that, Ooh, that will in, never not be funny yeah. to me. I was like, why the hell would you name a dog Kepper? And then I'm like, it took Marvin like a week. Yeah, He's like, I just was. figured out why they named her yeah. Kepper. So it would have been bad if they got rid of her. <laughs> the new owner would be like, but you didn't get her. You gave her away. This is Ritter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but it was it was a lot of work. I think the first I don't know how many days I think I was on one of the hounder. Was so yeah, and then you yeah. laughed. <laughs> yeah, then I yeah. laughed. I was like, hey, have yeah. fun. But by the time I left, we had her running around in the round pen. And, yeah. Uh, we had her out and uh, took her out in the field with a long line on her thing. And no, we Yonka didn't. I did that her. when you were gone. <laughs> yeah, Yonka worked with her while I was gone for a week or so. And now she's just cool. I don't know if they just turned her loose with that long line on her yet or not, but. That's a good question. Probably she, not. She'd probably be on long line until she's 20 or something too old to run. And then like, hey, we took the long line off Kepper. And be like, Marvin's been buried for 10 years. So you'll never know. <laughs> but it is fun to see people with the commitment like they had. Yeah, that the they, yeah. And, and the trust. In and them. they had dogs already, so it's not yeah, like. they didn't need her. Yeah. <laughs> they just decided to keep her, so. Yeah. But it's fun for me, like I said. And we get dogs like that here. That sometimes people pay us to train them and then help them rehome them. Yeah. You know, for whatever reasons. And uh, for me, I always have to pat somebody on the back for putting that kind of money and effort into a dog. Yeah, they really did. Uh, and yeah. these people didn't yeah. even mess up. A dog, dog they up. didn't even yeah, they go didn't. out and get. It yeah. appeared in their yard. Yeah, they didn't even screw yeah. the dog up. They got it this yeah. way. So it's always something for people to be able to do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it was fun for all of us here to train on her after about a week. <laughs> First week was Once we weren't fun. sweating so much. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. she never was. Never was mean. I mean, she never wanted to bite no. you. No, no. She didn't want a dog fight. She just wanted a buddy. And she'd been loose since she was a pup. Yeah. So she just, man, she had a great life. And it sounds like she has a real great life. She does, her, yeah. So she gets to be a dog now. I'll answer whether she's still on long line or not. <laughs> he <laughs> said she went on a run with me Monday. She won't really leave us when we are outside. Nice. So she probably don't want to be wild again. No. She's, she's like, like hey. this is pretty good. I got <laughs> fed twice a day. <laughs> Get a warm house, sleep in. People bed. to pet me. Yeah. So, but she was a real... Uh, Fun dog to have around. Yeah, that, she really I, I won't ever forget that. Yeah, and she liked everybody, too. And all the dogs, I mean. So, Brady, got anything? Uh, yeah, Brady just said she's playing with other two, with the other two dogs quite well all the time, too. Oh, good. That's awesome. And then Hugh Penland said just a bit ago, that's why I choose Marvin. If you can get a dog to down at 300 yards, you can help me stop leash reactivity, and you did. Yeah, it was fun because he was one of the dogs we always, well, boo, but he was one of the people we always talk about how he just kind of followed the rules and didn't make excuses. The, the bottom line is he made no excuses and he listened to not part of what you said, yeah. but all of what you said. And he just took it and ran with it and it was fun to see that. Yeah. So, uh, we got anything else, Brett? That's it, right? No, so it's out for seven. Oh, it's seven o'clock, so. I think we'll bail off. On the knot. And anybody got any questions, throw them out here. We have some good questions tonight. Yeah. And uh, if you have questions, we'll we'll yeah, review next them week. next week. Rochelle, thanks for joining us. Yeah. You're welcome. We appreciate it. <laughs> I know it's because we well, I fed you, but Okay. <laughs> yeah. He prepped it and all. <laughs> yeah. I said my wife, not me. You don't even listen. All right, thanks everybody. We'll I'm gonna review you next this week. video and show him that he didn't Yeah, say review that. this video and see what I said. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher.